now in this session we are going to discuss about uh, peptide bonds let us start with the definition peptide bonds are anhydride covalent bonds found between a carboxyl group of an amino acid and a and an amino group of succeeding amino acid and you can see the illustration along with that you have to follow the description if you see illustration there are two amino acids before the arrow mark first amino acid and second amino acid after the arrow mark you can see the peptide bond formed between the amino acids and in the process below the arrow mark you can see the loss of water h2o and if you compare this with the description peptide bonds are anhydride anhydride means loss of water that is shown below the arrow mark loss of water covalent bonds found between a carboxyl group so it is underlined with the same color in the description and also in the first amino acid illustration you can see the same color carboxyl group is represented and an amino group of succeeding amino acid so in the second amino acid you can see the amino group underlined and also in the description with the same color so hence the carboxylic group of the first amino acid and the amino group of the second amino acid they are going to react to form peptide bond so the OH of COH and H of NH2 they are going to combine to form water which is released you can see below the arrow mark and the rest COH is going to form peptide bond this is how peptide bond is formed between two amino acids and subsequently the succeeding amino acids are also going to attach in the same manner you can add the third amino acid 4 5 6 like that it is going to react in the same way and to form a long chain of peptide and leading to oligopeptide and polypeptide so this is about peptide bond which is formed between two amino acids next is we are going to discuss about uh, physiological important peptides there are several peptides which are having various physiological importance and in this we are going to concentrate on only few of the peptide and its uh, function in this you can see the list carnosine and and serine and next one second one is glutathione only important underlined only we are going to discuss in detail glutathione is a tripeptide made up of alpha glutamic acid cysteine and glycine it's a tripeptide made up of three three ammonia acids present in erythrocytes in large amounts it is a powerful reducing agent and is involved in various reduction reactions in the body hence this amino acid is very important in the reduction reaction process that occurs in the body and next is thyrotropin releasing hormone enkephalins and uh, next is hoxo oxytocin it, it is a nanopeptide made up of nine amino acids hormone secreted by the posterior pituitary it causes uterine contraction during the childbirth it helps in the perturation process and also milk secretion and next is vasopressin which is also called as antidiuretic hormone it is also a nanopeptide made up of nine amino acid secreted by posterior pituitary gland it is required for smooth muscle contraction and water reabsorption process hence this uh, involved in water reabsorption maintains the water balance in the body next is bradykinin which is also a nan nanopeptide which is it is a vasodilator it helps in the blood pressure maintaining function caladin it is a decapeptide made up of 10 amino acid it is also a vasodilator next is angiotensin angiotensin 2 which is a octopeptide made up of 8 amino acid is derived from the angiotensin 1 which is a decapeptide that means angiotensin gives rise to angiotensin 2 angiotensin 2 is a hypertensive product stimulates the release of aldosterone from adrenal glands angio means uh, blood vessels and tens tensin indicates pressure <coughs> hence as the name indicates it helps in the maintaining the blood pressure with the help of aldosterone next is glucagon it is a 29 amino acid peptide made it is a, a hypo hyperglycemic hormone 
hyperglycemia is it increases the blood glucose level in the body it is secreted from all phylates of langerhans of pancreatic cells and next is insulin which is also secreted from the pancreas but from beta islets of langerhans it is a hypoglycemic hormone that means it decreases the glucose level so one is glucagon which increases glucose level and insulin which decreases the glucose level and uh, gramycidin actinomycin gastrin secretin there are big list of uh, peptide hormones so in that we are we have discussed few of the important hormones chemistry of proteins so after discussing uh, peptide we will we'll discuss about what proteins means proteins are polymers of alpha amino acids which are bounded by peptide bonds so usually alpha amino acids are involved in formation of these proteins and they are linked by peptide bond that uh, number of amino acids will cross more than 100 then it is called as proteins classification of proteins proteins can be classified on various basis so we will discuss classification of proteins based on their composition shape and function so let us start with the classification of protein based on chemical composition based on chemical composition proteins are classified into three groups simple proteins that means as the name itself indicates simple that means they are simple in nature means they contains only basic components so you know the basic component of a protein is amino acid hence simple proteins they contain only amino acid as you can see in the underlined portion they do not contain any additional group there is no additional group present example serum albumin serum globulin keratin etc next next is conjugated proteins are also called as compound proteins these have additional conjugate groups along with amino acids that means along with amino acids they contain additional groups and that may be you can see in the example carbohydrate in the bracket so next to hemoglobin you can see the mineral iron heme or phosphate in the casein like that so example for this conjugated proteins are egg albumin which contains carbohydrate hemoglobin which contains iron casein which contain phosphate group and immunoglobulins these conjugated proteins are classified based on the type of the additional group present as phosphoproteins where phosphorus is present metalloproteins where metal is present glycoproteins where carbohydrates are present like that lipoproteins where lipid is the addition group so based on the type of addition group present in the proteins they are subclassified it is not shown in this slide and i can just recall the names as phosphoproteins metalloproteins and then glycoproteins etc next is the derived proteins derived proteins as the name itself indicates it is derived or borrowed they are formed from the partial hydrolysis of simple or compound proteins the above two proteins that is simple or conjugated proteins if they undergo hydrolysis then you will get the third category of protein that is called as derived proteins example gelatin derived from collagen proteases and peptones are also derived they are derived from albumin whereas collagen is derived from glycogen so these are all derived proteins so next is classification of proteins based on the shape or conformation so based on the shape exhibited by the proteins proteins are classified into two types or two groups globular proteins globe globe or globular means spherical or oval in shape these are spherical or oval in shape proteins example hemoglobin albumin and certain enzymes and the second one is fibrous proteins these are elongated and fiber like structure fibrous proteins example keratin collagen and elastin this is classification based on shape or conformation next is classification of protein based on biological function what type of function proteins is going to carry out in our body or in the biological process based on that we the proteins are classified into various types 
Proteins have diverse biological functions based on which they can be classified as catalytic proteins. All enzymes are protein in nature except a few ribozymes like proteins, uh, like ribozymes like enzymes, which are all derived in RNA in nature. So rest of them are protein in nature. Example exokinase and amylase. Catalytic proteins means they are enzymatic in action. Defense proteins that means they protect our body. Example immunoglobulins. Structural proteins they give a particular shape for the orga organism. Keratin present in the hair and nail. Collagen is present in the muscle. Hormonal proteins. Some hormones are protein in nature. They are also called as signaling proteins. Example growth, uh, growth hormone and insulin. Contractile proteins as the name helps, helps uh, as the name indicates it helps in the contraction and uh, relaxation of the process example actin myosin and tropomyosin present in the muscle transport proteins it helps in the transport of various type of uh, molecules serum albumin carries bilirubin fatty acids transfer in transport iron next is storage proteins ferritin storage of iron in liver and bone marrow so ferritin helps in the storage of iron and bone marrow next one is visual proteins helps in the vision rhodopsin and uh, iodopsin present in the retina of the eye membrane proteins sodium potassium pump or pos sodium potassium ATPase, which helps in the various transport process Hemo hemostatic proteins which helps in the blood clotting proce process example fibrinogen prothrombin buffer proteins which helps in the maintaining the ph of the blood example plasma proteins or hemoglobin respiratory proteins which helps in the respiration process example hemoglobin and myoglobin receptor proteins which helps in the binding to hormone example insulin receptors glucagon receptor steroid hormone receptor etc these are all the classification of proteins based on the function thank you